Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size Talk. Here with me today is Matthias from the SciLife Lab Data Center, and he is going to tell us anything new about the NF Core website. Yes, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, you may, might have already seen that there are some smaller changes on the website. Uh, actually, in the background, there were quite a lot of changes, and I structured this bite size so that the start is just a quick overview of what's happened and how you can interact with the new website. And then uh, the later part is more the technical part. So if you're more interested in that, stick around. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about why we choose what we choose um, and how you can use it if you want to make some changes. Yes. So we made a new website, but what was actually wrong with the old one? Uh, you might have seen more and more desperate messages from Phil over the years that we made some decisions which, yeah, came back to us and also, which includes also, for example, the hosting uh, where we kept crashing the, um, or like kept overflowing the memory by opening the stats page on two different places. Stuff like that hopefully is uh, of the past. With a new website and then he i think at the beginning jokingly just uh, kept sending this match message message especially to Harshal. um but yes i accepted this challenge and then one wintry day uh last year in december i went out to mukran which is really far away from stockholm not so far but it is outside of stockholm and we had a nice uh, sit down in this uh, in Phil's living room and also then in, in this garage to just start coding on this uh, new website. And yes, started on like December 8th and just eight short months later and a few thousand lines of code changes we were at the state where we needed to, or we could launch the website. And we, yeah, pushed ourselves with some encouraging gifts. And now we have the new website. And what do you do now with it? Well, actually it didn't change that much. We tried to basically rebuild a lot of things we had because we liked, for example, that you, when you want to edit uh, something in the markdown, you can just hit the edit page and are directed to the uh, repository on GitHub. Uh, or if you scroll down the whole page, there's also always a link to the markdown if it's a markdown file, which is a basis for a lot of uh, pages on the website. Um, if you are actually in the website repository, most of it lives inside the source slash content uh, folder where we have this and then for the about files, docs and the events are the main uh, files uh, for the, which are rendered on the website. Of course, the pipelines are also rendered there, but they live in, in the pipeline repositories. Uh, more about that later. Um, <clears throat> One thing you might encounter is that we have now stricter build checks uh, for the front matter. So when you write the markdown, you may, might have seen that we have this, not just markdown in, in our files, but we have the front matter uh, distinguished by the uh, three dashes, which we use to collect some metadata about the file itself, usually title and subtitle. But here, for example, in the events, we also have a start date and a start time. And there are now, because we have so many problems with dates and like countdowns for dates and that they show up correctly, uh, we now are stricter and how they have to look like. And in, but with the start time and the end time, we now enforce that there's a, a UTC offset. And if you don't do it, you get a build error um, shown, which looks like this, which hopefully has a, a helpful error message for you to know what went wrong. Um, but that's not all what we can do now. We have a lot of cool other things. For example, you can have now more than one usage pipeline documentation or the same for outputs. So 
if you want, for example, to have like uh, troubleshooting uh, as a, its own site on the pipeline documentation, you just need to create a folder called usage uh, uh, output. You will still need to have a usage .md and an output .md, but inside that subfolder, you can put whatever markdown file you want. Um, and then it is uh, represented on the website with this nice sidebar on the left, and also the icon itself changes a bit. Um, other things are that you can, we have a bit more markdown flavors now, or like markdown magic. You can have uh, these things called callouts or admonitions you might have seen now with the new template. Um, <clears throat> we included them in a re readme. Uh, and the basic syntax is always three colons around basically a block quote and then some signal words like note, warning, danger, uh, or you can also customize it however you want. Like you see below that you have your own, um, your own icon and the own specific title. Another small useful things are like that we render our mermaid graphs. So if you don't have, yeah, if you want to quickly show a flow of, of some uh, information in your pipeline or whatever, you want to describe with a, a big, a quick mermaid graph, just write it like a normal code block with mermaid as the language and you're good to go. It will be rendered then on the website. Um, actually, you can not only write markdown, you can write also MDX which is basically markdown with a little extra and the little extra are components. For example, here, a Svelte component, you just almost write it like you would write it for Astro, you import it, um, then write your normal uh, markdown, but you can write this kind of HTML style in your markdown. And this is then rendered as the actual component, but actually all the other, all the rest of the file is normal markdown syntax. <clears throat> so with that, uh, we can get a bit more styling and custom features into our markdown files and don't need to rewrite or don't need to write so many pages in like Astro or, or Svelte, but actually can have them still as basically markdown files around. Another cool thing is because we changed hosts, we have now Netlify and that brings us a uh, a uh, cool feature that every uh, pull request you open on, uh, on GitHub with the net uh, with the website has its own deploy preview, which means the whole site with all the data of the normal site is built with your changes in it, and you can then um, quickly see if actually all the changes you wanted are there and everything actually built correctly. Um, very handy, uh, very cool feature. Uh, the build time currently is around eight minutes, but we are getting closer to five minutes now. So it takes a bit, but then it's there and it's very useful to see if actually the markdown you wrote was correct or if you maybe find more typos when it's correctly rendered. Uh, and also quite recently, we just added the site-wide search or I also use it as a quick navigation. Uh, it's on top of the, in the nav bar, or if you had hit command K on Mac, um, you get this um, yeah, command palette almost where you can search for all the things, all the, uh, through all the pages and quickly go to, also to recent ones to yeah very nicely jump between the pages and hopefully discover all the, the gems we have on the pages because there's often a lot more on the page than people discover by the, themselves. Um, <clears throat> also something nice now is that uh, we have the, all the information we use to, for example, all the pipelines and the modules we have. This is now done via GitHub Action, which runs once every morning, or you can also uh, kick it off manually. And then you will see, for example, your new release uh, of the pipeline or uh, whatever changes you made on the pipeline or modules uh, side of things. 
with that, we will go over now to the more technical details. Uh, if you have some questions for to the previous part, stick around to the end. We you can ask them there, there, or just write them in the chat, and I'll come back to them at the end. So now a bit about the technical details and what were like the challenges we had. Uh, one big <laughs> thing which keeps getting to us is that we have our data not just like a classical and one repository. We have the website repository, which by the way has also been renamed. It's not enough uh, dash co.re anymore. It's now website. Um, then we have the events, the docs, uh, and all the website code. But of course, we also pull in all the data from the website repository, especially the documentation markdown files from there. And with that makes it difficult and no real framework is actually built to handle this very nicely. Um, but we have it like that and, and we figured out a, a way around it. And other requirements we had is, oh, like I mentioned before, that we want to have markdown from different sources, but also we want it to be mainly static because most of the files don't need to be intact or like need to be uh, built every time somebody loads it, which makes them also fast. <laughs> Um, we also wanted to make it easy to add th things to the website if we come up with something new or if Nextflow comes up with something new, suddenly we need sub-sub workflows or sub-modules, whatever. We should be able to handle this now quite nicely. And also we would like it to make it easy for people to contribute, uh, which also was one of the reasons why we wanted to get away from the old website. Uh, because the old website was written in PHP, and it's a very nice language. It is just, it has its age and you feel and, and see its age. Uh, so the our thoughts was, okay, let's try maybe a new website and then maybe more people are willing to touch code on the website. Um, so first we thought, oh, that's the Gatsby. That's the, the cool little kid on the town. Um, but I had my problems with it. <laughs> And thankfully, and there was a newer kid on the blog, which was Astro. Um, and for Astro, it does like nice static websites, but it needs other frameworks for uh, interactive parts. So we use Svelte for all the interactive things there. So why Astro and not, for example, Gatsby is because Astro really tries to just send HTML over. If you don't have any interactive parts, or if you don't explicitly tell it to send over some uh, JavaScript, what you get from the server is just HTML and CSS. Um, very nice, very fast. I, I like it. Um, but you can still use some JavaScript. So it's not that you uh, have to give up completely on, on the nice features of JavaScript. It is just that it tries to not ship more than actually needed because like for a lot of things we use JavaScript to like filter out things or get some information, but that is just happening on the server and the, the user or the browser actually doesn't need to do a lot of these things. Um, and another cool thing is because we weren't sure which interactive framework we wanted to use additionally to Astro, it is basically you can use more or less every uh, framework and we still could now add React, Preact, Boo, Svelte, whatever you want, you can have on, on one uh, page basically. Uh, so that's very nice. Um, Atro, of course, comes with its own philosophy and specifically the, the buzzword for Astro is islands. Everything is an island on, or uh, on Astro and therefore it can decide. Um, how to handle it. So here you see different islands we have on the main website. And actually some of them are interactive. So some of them need JavaScript loaded uh, and some of them are, are built with JavaScript, but just on, the, on during build time. And then the JavaScript is not run anymore. 
Um, and you also see here already that we can even tell it when to load the JavaScript. So it can load the JavaScript on load, or also just if the element becomes visible, or also if it's just uh, uh, when it has time. So very nice way to kind of decide when to actually put some load on the browser. Um, how does an Astro file look like? Uh, quite nice, I think. Um, you have front matter. Uh, so like we have for Markdown here, you put all the JavaScript code there. Then you put uh, the HTML and, CS and GSX and then uh, the styling at the end, um, which is then component-wide styling, which means we can also re could also reduce our CSS amounts quite a bit. We don't have, we still have one big, bigish file, but it's not like dealing with everything anymore. We can now uh, more nicely target our stylings just for the components where we want to have it. Um, another cool thing with uh, Astro is something I mentioned before that we can now check for things on the in the front meta of the Markdown files which Astro calls content collections. And it's basically just a JSON schema here. It's a JavaScript schema for your Markdown and Markdown X files. So we can here, for example, write some, uh, some uh, checks for formatting, but we can also transform it and makes it a lot easier to, do, to keep everything in shape and all the Markdown files in similar way. And, with that, keep the code quality higher in our repository. Yes, so that's why we chose Astro. And why Swells then? Well, of course, the big leader is uh, React. Everybody kind of knows React. Not so many people actually want to write React. Uh, and I'm one of these people. So here is what you would write to ch um, change um, a checkbox from checked to uncheck. Um, and in Svelte, it is like this. You just give it, a, you bind the status checked on it and have a, a state uh, on top in the, in the script part, and that's it. It's a lot less code, a lot less uh, things to initiate. It's just it's also, I find, when we look at the file structure, a lot closer to how you write Astro, so we, that you don't need to jump around that much. Still sometimes confusing, because that makes them a bit too similar sometimes, and then you write Astro as well, which doesn't work. Uh, but in general, the structure is you have on top a script section, um, then HTML with some JavaScript flavors in it, and then CSS. Um, so the big change is that you actually need to declare it as a script tags and not with the front matter like in, in Astro. And you then add it, like if you want to then use a Svelte component in Astro, it's very easy. You just import it, like whatever you else, else you import into your uh, front meta and the Astro file, and then you add the component there. Something I often forget, so I um, wanted to mention it here explicitly. If you don't add, if you add, for example, a, a button and don't add the client idle or any client directive, it doesn't do anything. It's just rendered and no JavaScript is loaded. So if you think something is wrong in the Svelte component, check first <laughs> if the import and the Astro component actually is then run on on the Astro side as well. Yes, and if you want to give it a try locally, um, you just clone the website repository, then you install the dependencies with npm install. Um, you uh, build the cache because we have for the, all the markdown files we cache, we cache all the <clears throat> pipeline information and the module information. We build a big caching file to save on build time. And then you just, to npm run dev, and then on localhost 4321, you can see the website. And if you just want to test it, if it still builds, you can either make a pull request and let Netlify build it, or you can build it locally with npm run build. Yes, quickly some stats. 
uh, before I come to the end. So in total, we have now almost 4,000 pages built, which is all the websites, all the different, uh, all the pipelines, and all the different versions. And one of these, uh, 3,900 is actually server-side rendered. Well, I'd say it's more than one, but one subgroup of these are uh, all the AWS result pages. So the first layer is still statically built because it's it's faster <laughs> and I want speed with this website, but all the subsequent steps are then rendered on the on the server. So they're a bit slower, but you shouldn't recognize it too much. The bigger delay is actually with the coming from the call to AWS. Um, yes, and I mentioned before the average build time on Netlify is eight minutes. I just uh, yesterday night got it below six minutes. So there are also some improvements in respect to the for the hackathon coming on the way. Um, but still, it's it's a bit of a hefty website. So be a bit patient when it builds, but it has done everything there. Um, yes, with that, thank you very much, uh, especially to Phil uh, for, yeah, helping code and also like pushing that we rewrite it and accepting all my weird quirks of I want to have it like this and let's not use Gatsby, please, no. Uh, and uh, also thanks to Edmund and also Matthias Seppa um, for pushing towards uh, different frameworks, pointing different things out and also, yeah, keep pushing Phil that we actually rewrite this website and the Silaflap data center for financing me. Good, with that, do we have any questions? So anyone can now uh, unmute themselves if they want and also uh, start the video, so. Yes, one comment from Phil is correct. If you, so only the build takes the, this eight minutes. If you run NPM run dev, it actually doesn't build the whole site. It is basically doing server side rendering. So you get it, in, it takes like 30 seconds to start up everything. Are there any more questions or comments? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, there, is there anything you'd do differently, Matthias, now if we're starting this project again? Would you still use Astro? <laughs> yeah, I think I would still use Astro, actually. I'm still very happy with it. Uh, let's see how it develops. But like it just got, yeah, I'm still very happy of how little JavaScript do you actually ship and what I would, well, now, no, I'm actually, for now, I'm, I'm still very much in the honeymoon phase with the website, I think. It's like, yeah, of course, like all the stats pages and like maybe not write it in a JSON file, but that is something we will, of course, fix in the future. <laughs> yes. Is there anything else? Comments, questions, requests? If not, then I, yeah. I was just going to say, it's a note on the Gatsby thing, just in case anyone's not uh, aware of a gossip of different JavaScript build frameworks on the internet, which is quite a niche topic. Um, Gatsby, since we started this project, Gatsby was acquired by Netlify. And then just recently, there's been rumors going around that Netlify has basically fired the whole team that works on Gatsby. So um, just a week or two ago, we were sort of like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it seems like hopefully we picked the right horse. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Another part of JavaScript. <laughs> cool, then uh, thank you very much. You did amazing work over a long time. <laughs> and uh, I hope this website will stay with us for a long time to come. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, everyone, also for listening. And of course, as usual, the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite-sized talks. Hope to see you next time. Bye.